Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen, and today we're going to talk about the basic and the advanced ways of rigging a kayak. All right, so what we're going to start out with is we're going to talk about the minimum things that you need on a kayak to get out there and go fishing. What I've got here is I've got a Bonafide SS-127. Yes, it's probably not a beginner kayak, but I'm not a beginner kayak fisherman, so I don't have one. But I'm gonna talk about the main things that need to be on this kayak in order for you to, to, to enjoy it and to have fun fishing. First of all, most importantly, is the PFD. You've got to have one on 100% of the time. People lose their lives every single week because they're in these kayaks and they don't wear their PFD. I don't care if you can swim, I don't care if the, the water is six inches deep. Put your PD, PFD on if you're in one of these things. Your life is that important. And spend some good money on a comfortable one. If you're gonna be fishing them all day long, or fishing all day long, you want to have a PFD that you can wear all day long, so don't skimp on it. Please don't skimp on it. You know, what is the value of your life? A $50 uh, PFD or a $100 PFD? I don't think there is a value. But anyway, so next is a good paddle. This, uh, the paddles that I recommend is, is just get a good one. Usually $100 plus on a paddle is, is gonna be a good one. Uh, you can go as much as four or $500, but, uh, but get a decent paddle. If you get a cheap one that flexes too much or that breaks in the middle of the day, it can ruin an absolute great day of fishing. Next, you need somewhere to store your tackle. So what we have right here is we have a black pack, but most people, what they do is they make it out of a milk crate. And there's a lot of videos on YouTube, just do a search for, uh, for a milk crate, tackle storage, anything on YouTube about building a tackle storage system out of a milk crate, and you'll see hundreds of videos on it. This is a black pack from Yak Attack. Um, it holds all of my tackle, and it also holds three rods in the back. It comes with three rod holders. So, uh, that's, a, that's another thing. You've got to have somewhere to store your rods when you're paddling. Good rod holders here are, be, are good. I don't like rod holders up in the front because if you put rod holders up front, then what happens is that you hit them when you're paddling. So anything that's up in this, little area, this area right here tends to get in the way of paddling if it's too high. So that's why I kind of avoid putting rod holders up front. But that's it. A place to put your rods, a place to put your tackle, a PFD and a paddle, get on the water and go fishing. All right, so now let's talk about the advanced way of rigging a kayak. If I was serious about bass fishing, well, I guess I am, but uh, if I was a, an angler trying to get into tournament fishing, tournament fishing and joined KBF or kayak bass fishing and got into those big tournaments and wanted to rig a kayak out to where it would be everything that I wanted it to be, this is how I'd rig it. So let's go over this Bonafide SS-127 and talk about the stuff in the boat that I have rigged up for a day of fishing. Make sure that you spend good quality money on a good PFD. A paddle, a good paddle. This one's a really good paddle, but you can get anywhere, like I said, a paddle anywhere from $100 up is about what you're gonna need to paddle around with. Just get one that, that pushes a lot of water. Uh, I love bending branches because they've been doing fishing paddles for a lot longer than anybody else. They are very, very advanced, and uh, it's just, they're a joy to paddle. Going on down the boat, I've got my fish finder. You're gonna want a fish finder. Most of the tournaments are offshore tournaments when you're on those big bodies of water like Kentucky Lake, where they have the national championship. Um, and this one right here, I love the Bonafide because this is what it, this is what you're able to do with the dry pack. I've got my battery in here. I've got all my wiring in here. Um, and it comes out and it goes in, which means what you can do is you can take your electronics out, wiring and everything else, and put it in the back of your truck. Everything's self-contained. You don't have to run wires through the boat. You don't have to run a transducer through the boat, that kind of stuff. No holes to drill in your boat to mount your electronics. So it's what I love about that. I've got a junk drawer through full of tackle and junk and stuff that I use all day long, water, marker buoys, because I'm fishing offshore this, this summer, uh, sunscreen, Bass Mafia terminal coffin. Moving on back, we'll get to that in a minute. 
A net, you're gonna want a good net. I've actually modified this ram tube right here to hold this Yak Attack uh, leverage landing net, and which you guys have seen me use a lot. And it locks it right down in there so when I do hook a fish and I'm getting ready to net it, I don't have to look back to grab my net. I know it's sitting right here. So you'll see me in videos reach back, grab the net, and it'll be sitting right there and drag the fish into it. That's key. Have a net that's there, that's easily accessible, but out of the way. I have it directly behind my right shoulder because I tend to cast right-handed and sidearm. If I go backwards, I'll get, if I throw it over, make an overhand cast, which I rarely do straight forward in front of the boat, I'll, uh, I'll snag the net. So I put it in a place where I know I'm not gonna snag and I know not to make an overhand cast. Next is again, the crate, or this is a black pack by Yak Attack. It's got more of my tackle in it um, and I'd have it stuffed slap full of plastics and everything else if I was uh, out on the water for a long day or going on a, hit, hitting, the, hitting the water for a tournament. Woo, I'm having trouble talking today. So what we have here is we have uh, the, the Yak Attack uh, Omega rod holders. Hey, there's an American flag right there. I didn't even notice that. Look at that right there. The American flag molded into it. That's cool as heck. Anyway, back to the Omega rod holders. Um, they are, I, I put them pointing out of the back of the boat so they'll hold two extra rods that makes them easy to get, uh, uh, to grab and it also gets them out of the way so I don't hit them on my back cast. Uh, got three more rods in the black pack rod tubes. So that's a total of five rods and now I'll have an extra one sitting up front, laying in my lap and I'll maybe every once in a while I'll store three or four more down in the hole of the boat. I don't do that very often. Okay, right over here, one thing I just saw that I totally forgot was my anchor wizard. Uh, it, it runs my anchor that's up in the front of the boat. Here, I'll show you my anchor. We loosen it up. You loosen it up, it drops down to the ground. And I use, usually use a kettlebell. Now, this is a five pound kettlebell. I've got a 10 pound that I use during rough water or, or heavy, heavy current, like in rivers and stuff like that. Works just fine. And then when you're ready to winch it back up, just like that, it comes right on back up. I've modified and put a, a, a gear track right here on the, on the uh, perch pads. So back here, we get into the expensive stuff. We've got the, uh, the power pole micro anchor. I don't have a battery on it right now, so it's not working. But, uh, and power pole just came out with a new spike, which I'm excited about, which is a hollow uh, spike. It's an ultralight spike. You really don't need one of the big heavy ones for a kayak. And that's the reason, that's the reason why they came up with it. You get all that weight of the original spike up here and it makes your kayak really, really wobbly, especially if it's an unstable kayak. It'll make it very, very unstable. Uh, so they've lightened it up and it makes all the world a difference when it comes to uh, your, your uh, spike wobbling back and forth as you're kayaking. Then, an electric motor. I know there's a lot of controversy on whether it makes it a kayak or, or makes it not a kayak, but if I'm fishing heavy water, or a big water, it, I wanna be able to get to my spot quickly. And then I shut it down and I paddle the rest of the way so I can be stealthy. Helps me get between spots faster and it makes me more competitive on the water. That's my thinking. Number two, when I'm fishing with my kids and they're all in their own little, little kayaks, they all need help. I gotta be able to get back and forth between all of my children quickly. So the Torquedo makes that a big advantage because I don't wear myself out by the end of the day. But that's one of those luxuries. This boat is full of luxuries. Like I said, if you're serious about fishing or bass fishing out of a kayak or you're serious about getting into the KBF tournaments, this is what I would rig up for. Okay. I'm not recommending that you go spend this much money on a kayak. Don't complain about how much money I've got into this kayak. It is my kayak, it's what I love, and it's what I would recommend if you really want to get serious about traveling the country and fishing the KBF tournaments. So those are the two bona fides. You've got the basic one and you've got the advanced one. It is what it is. That's what kayak fishing has gotten so big lately that you're able to do a lot of things. And I'll tell you something that's funny. You get those guys that over-rig their kayaks. Man, before the national championship, I had saw guys with dual uh, electronics or dual fish finders on their boat had multiple amounts of, of rod holders. They could hold more rods up front than anybody had ever seen and then all of a sudden they realize, oh darn, I haven't been fishing this way the whole year and now I just made my boat into something where things get in the way. The key to rigging a kayak 
is keep everything you look at look at this one everything that's advanced is from here back and it doesn't get in the way of me paddling when i'm paddling i take and i drop my my controls for my torpedo i drop that it down out of the way and i just start to paddle and that's the biggest thing is if you're going to paddle keep this part of your boat clear if you're going to run a motor it really doesn't matter but uh, like i always say be sure to introduce somebody to fishing introduce them to my channel let me help you teach them how to fish more importantly get out on the water go out and catch some fish and have a great day we'll see you